So we affirmed India's triple B minus rating uh, with that negative outlook. And in our view, the triple B minus rating really reflects India's strong growth potential and its relatively res resilient external finances uh, against some weaknesses coming from high public debt and a relatively uh, weak financial sector. So the negative outlook, as you mentioned, does reflect our concern around the trajectory of that public debt ratio. India entered the pandemic with relatively high uh, public debt compared to triple B peers at about 70% uh, of GDP. And as a result of the pandemic, that debt ratio has risen now to just above 90% under our, our current forecasts. And so our negative outlook really comes down to, you know, our concerns that maybe the government won't be able to uh, bring down that debt ratio over the medium term. And on that front, I, I think, you know, what's, what's important, the government has laid out a, a fairly gradual consolidation plan, and it really shifts then the onus towards India returning to very high levels of GDP growth to bring down that debt ratio over the medium term. And, and there are some concerns uh, you know, in our view about uh, the government's uh, ability to do so. And yet from, from the growth perspective, you're expecting nearly 13% growth in the current fiscal year. But how much does the current coronavirus crisis uh, risk derailing that outlook? In other words, is there a downside risk to that projection? There's certainly downside risk to our growth forecast for this year. We uh, released these forecasts back in, in middle of March, so right before the second wave really took hold in, in India. So certainly quite a bit of downside risk, I'd, I'd say, to our, our current fiscal year forecast. It's a, quite an evolving situation as, as we're seeing in India with the public health crisis. Um, so it's hard to, at this point, pinpoint the exact uh, degree of, of uh, impact that that will have on our on our growth forecast, I think compared to last year, we're likely to see more localized and less stringent type restrictions than we saw a year ago during India's very uh, severe nationwide lockdown. But still, we are seeing now impacts on mobility, impacts on uh, just people's uh, consumer confidence, and, uh, and, and we think that that will weigh on uh, economic growth in, in the near term. But India's economy is relatively resilient. And we saw this after the first wave when the economy bounced back quite rapidly. And, and we do think that while this um, recent wave does delay India's ongoing economic recovery, uh, it, it won't in the end end up derailing it. It depends how you define derailing, really, doesn't it, Jeremy? But you were right in saying that uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has tried to avoid a national lockdown this time around. He's been quite vocal about that. M meantime, we've seen states, for example, having to impose lockdown restrictions rather than full country lockdown. But where are you concerned in terms of uh, the urgent need to focus on the crisis might delay things like policy reforms in certain sectors of the Indian economy? Well, over the past year, despite the pandemic, we have seen the government move forward on some uh, reform initiatives. Uh, the, the government has passed labor market reforms and agricultural reforms, though there have been, of course, implementation issues around the agricultural reforms. It's also continued to roll out the uh, production-linked incentive scheme. So there has been some momentum that has uh, persisted on, on the reform side. And so we, we do think, you know, this, of course, requires quite a bit of policy focus with, with the second wave, but we do see a bit of reform commitment uh, by the government um, going forward. I think where our concern really lies at this point is in the financial sector and the impact that the second wave could have on India's uh, banks. And, and they came into the pandemic with relatively weak uh, balance sheets. And um, there have been a lot of forbearance measures put in place by, by the Reserve Bank of India. But as those come to an end, I think we'll really see you know, where things stand in terms of banks not performing assets and how well uh, positioned those banks will be to provide credit growth to the economy um, after the COVID shock uh, fades. That's, I think, really our, our concern um, for India's recovery and then medium-term growth. We see that as a potential constraint.